I'm starting from zero in No Man's Sky to answer one question. How good is the game now? Not that enjoyable. Its gameplay is underdeveloped. Oh, it's a glorified tech demo. But now, eight years later, we'll check out the new worlds, factions, quests, boss fights, events, new glitches, to see if the game is actually worth it. This is No Man's Sky starting from zero in 2024. I woke up on a planet, alone, with no memories of how I got there, nor who I was. The radiation was high, my protection was going to run out, I needed to recharge my suit protection with sodium. But in order to find some, I had to fix my scanner. To do so, I gathered ferrite dust by mining small rocks. Once that was repaired, I was able to scan the surrounding area for sodium. couldn't find whatever made that sound. Maybe for the better. Detected. Got a distress signal. 600 units away. I made my way there. I needed to find some answers. I got to the location. I found damaged machinery, a ship on fire, and a strange crimson orb. I got closer. The sphere started floating. It says something about an iteration being deleted. I had two options, to broadcast or to leave. I chose the first. The orb vanished. By opening the damaged machinery, I received a few nanites. There were also some boxes free to loot. Got some carbon, sodium, and more. Lastly, I took a closer look inside the crashed ship. Launch thrusters would have lined, as well as the pulse engine. This ship seemed to recognize me. Controls reacted to my touch. I tried to read the ship's logs, but they were unavailable. Fixing the starship required a mix of crafted products. First, I needed to craft metal plating with ferrite dust. Next, I had to create a hermetic seal, but I needed to salvage a planetary chart from the distressed beacon cache. After activating it, I received some coordinates, painting a location nearby, 900 units away. I made my way to it. On this planet, I encountered some strange insect-like creatures. They seemed quite peaceful, but later on, I would find horrible and deadly beings. Some of them reminded me of the brutal battles you can fight in the most thrilling mobile RPG game ever made, which is running one of its biggest events to date, the Oscar Divide. From August 21 to November 22, you'll be able to collect four champions based on Norse mythology, Loki the Deceiver, Thor Feyhammer, Odin Feyfather, and Freja Fe Fate Weaver. Simply by logging into Raid for 7 days between now and October 23rd, you can get Loki the Deceiver for free, lock in 7 more days after that to earn even more rewards, and access a second phase of benefits once the 2 weeks of login bonuses have been earned. You can get the other 3 Norse mythology themed champions via in-game activities. You can also enter the event dungeon and face off against the almighty Odin Fae Father. Click my link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses, available only using my link. On sign up, you'll get a huge starter pack with an epic champion to gore from the orc faction. At level 15, you'll get another one that includes an epic knight errand from Bannerlord's faction, but are my personal favorite, since it's one of the most dangerous single target damage dealers. All of this are available only using my link. Come find me under the name Arian Shadow, join my clan, the Undead Slayers, and we'll be legends together. So don't miss out. Download Raid now using the link in the description, start working towards getting your free Loki the Deceiver Champion and take on the challenges of the Asgard Divide today. I looked for sodium to recharge my protection. I did a shelter, but couldn't find any. Thankfully, with the resources that I gathered, I was able to push through. Storm the storm ceased just when I arrived at the coordinates. I opened some damaged machinery, getting some more nanites, but that wasn't the important thing. I found a hollow archive. There was an audio log. No one making this recording in case being behind fabricated. But we have some new bys are damaged. And find ship. The log finished, and the machine whirred to life. 
spitting out supplies. I had the hermetic seal I needed to repair my ship. Whoever it was that led me here, whoever left this message, perhaps they found themselves in the same situation as I did now. It was time to return to the ship. To make my way back, I needed an analysis visor. With it, I would be able to locate and highlight nearby points of interest. It could also be used to analyze flora, fauna, and more, to sell data for some units. To create it, I needed to craft carbon nanotubes, getting the necessary carbon from plants and trees. With the analysis visor in my hands, I gave it a test run, scanning all the nearby flora. Now, I could see my starship's coordinates. Time to return to it. On the way, I stumbled upon some weird red cubes. It was navigational data. Also, while recharging my exosuit protection, I kept on scanning everything I stumbled upon to get some units. Back on the ship, I repaired the pulse engine. Next thing to take care of was the launch thruster. Pure ferrite and the hydrogen jelly were required to fix it. To proceed, I needed a refiner to transform materials into more complex ones. With the hydrogen, I was able to make jelly, which I used to grease the engine. While gathering ferrite, One of the rocks turned out to be an alien. I tried to chase him, but he ran away. I gathered enough ferrite dust and oxygen to create the portable refiner. To function, the portable refiner required fuel, which could be any form of carbon. By refining ferrite dust, I got pure ferrite, which was the last thing I needed to repair the launch thruster. All systems were now functional. I was ready to take off. Mission. Please identify yourself. You're not alone. The broadcast ended as strangely as it began. The final piece of the signal appeared to be a set of planetary coordinates. I used the pulse drive to fly towards it. Follow the signal to a broken machine, tapping out its broadcast into the void. I tried to decipher the signal, 16, over and over again. No fuel in. Failed to reach the station. Hazard protection low. No choice but to underground. Deployed base computer. The signal contained plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator. Maybe the computer will hold more information about whoever was leaving these messages. To build a base computer, I required copper. To get that, I had to craft a terrain manipulator, found the copper node, and mined all of it. By using the portable refiner, I was able to get chromatic metal. Finally, I was able to craft the computer. While choosing a suitable location for it, I stumbled upon a buried technology module. Using the terrain manipulator, I was able to dig it out. Got some salvage data. I set up the computer and claimed my base. I accessed the logs from the previous user. Normal sweeping across. Construction supplies low. Busting shelter plans for well. me too. Back soon. I had the blueprints required to start building my own base. It would provide shelter from the harsh weather conditions, which were pretty intense. After finishing my shelter, I returned to the base computer. Construction largely. 
success. Recover salvage data from nearby. Plans locked. Scans indicate additional subterranean devices. Beginning search. Whoever recorded these logs evidentially had some success, and perhaps I could learn from their efforts. I extracted more blueprints, and it was time to build a construction research unit. After crafting it, I used the solvers data I found before to research and install a base teleport module. Now I needed to power it up. To do that, I had to unlock a biofuel reactor, but I was out of solvers data. After digging out more buried technology, I got the blueprint and installed the reactor. Lastly, I set up all the wires, put in some fuel, and finally, the teleporter was ready. I used the computer to access the next lock. Scanner detected initial broadcast, reading 16, the space station. Base computer archives had reached their end. My predecessor appeared to have left their base and headed to the space station. Now, I would do the same. Here, you could trade, get missions, learn words, operate your ship, and equipment. I talked with the different aliens and asked about the one who came before me. After a few conversations with no valuable info, I stumbled upon someone. I saw the same red light that stared at me at the distressed beacon. I mentioned the number 16. We are watching you, traveler friend. Find what we have left you. The alien spoke, but the words weren't their own. A string of code was echoed back to me through that red glare, locked directly to my exosuit. Maybe my base computer could make something out of this code. Every system had a space station serving as a hub. By exploring the place, I found navigation data and some units. I also kept meeting new life forms, learning the language word by word. I upgraded my exosuit inventory too. Most merchants require nanites for upgrades. I didn't have enough to buy anything yet. I teleported back to my base, used the computer to decrypt what I got, a message. The traveler finds their wings, fly to us, and claim your place among the stars. Got a distress signal on this same planet, I made my way there. Bruins. Found the remains of a computer, some partial records were available. I found the pilot's log, blinking, awaiting input. I requested the log. The terminal spit out a strange sequence of numbers. They were followed by a short message. The anomaly comes for the stars. Take flight. A schematic for a hyperdrive was attached to the end of the message. I took the plans from the computer. Turns out this hyperdrive blueprint was not for a freighter, but for a conventional starship. Someone placed this here after the crash. This drive would allow me to attain warp speed and jump between systems. To create the hyperdrive, it required microprocessors, which could only be purchased at the space station. I needed more than 100,000 units to buy the necessary amount. Time to get to work. There were cargo pods buried in the remains of the freighter. I looted one. Got some nanites. And also... Radiation some radiation. Found starship launch fuel, a warp cell, and tons of units on the rest of the pods. Got almost the whole amount that I needed. Before leaving for the space station, I activated the exosuit upgrade chart and received some coordinates. It was on the other side of the planet, so I took my spaceship and used a pulse drive to make my way there. To receive the upgrade I needed to repair the system, it required advanced material which I didn't have on me. I flew to the space station and sold one salvage data, which left me by the four microprocessors that I needed. After mining some copper and getting the required chromatic metal, I installed the hyperdrive and charged it with the warp cell that I found in the wreckage. Perhaps now I will find some answers out there among the stars. But I needed more warp cells. I needed to find a source of antimatter. I searched for it with the Starship scanner, found the signal on another planet. The coordinates led me to a destroyed building. There was a corrupted terminal. It was clogged with an unnerving, pulsating slime. Nevertheless, it appeared to function. 
As I touched the input panel, the substance reacted violently. The device opened, revealing a single crimson eye. It printed out a blueprint for antimatter, accompanied by a strange message. You will find this when the time is right. Got the formula for the antimatter. I crafted another warp cell. It was time to give it a test run. I opened the galaxy map. I chose the closest system on the way to the galactic core. The Starship Monitoring System reported an error. Destination 16. I accepted the new guidance, and it plotted a route. A fuel source was detected. I followed the signal. Leading me to a strange structure. I approached one of the stones. It resonated, producing a sound that filled my mind. The name Gek floated in my vision. A word in this alien tongue was seared into my brain. This structure was unlike anything I have ever encountered on my journey so far. Everything about it was so obviously alien, so obviously out of place. As I stared, words formed in my mind. A strange, broken speech. Is it traveler? Is it friend? It felt strange, responding to questions I wasn't sure that I was being asked. Is it first? Is it last? This monolith was ancient. It asked these questions many times over, it felt like. Have they seen the Crimson Eye? Has the Crimson Eye seen them? Likelihood of anomaly exceeds safety parameters. Breach detected. The boundaries fall. The walls collapse. Your universe awaits. Find us, traveler. My next objective was to find the mysterious messenger. Making my way into space, no objectives seemed to appear, no markers to go to. Before exploring the nearby planets, I visited the local space station and talked with the mission agent. I started a quest to locate a missing person. Before leaving, I learned a few words in Gek and upgraded my exosuit inventory. I used the scanner in space, got the location of the missing person and to investigate. Was a trading outpost. There was a Gek merchant and a local information repository computer. I talked with a couple of Geks and found the missing life form. Safe and well. I transmitted the location to the client. Mission complete. Back in space, I got a message. You're not alone. Please identify yourself. I, I identify myself. You left me. Why did you? I told them I didn't understand. Of course you'd say that. Of course you like the others. I asked who I was speaking to, but there was no reply. The communicator fell silent. I got some coordinates to go to. First, I handed in the mission to get the rewards. Got one gig standing and an exosuit upgrade chart. Also grabbed a couple more missions just in case. Time to go to the stranger's coordinates. found a destroyed ship, B-class, better than mine, but it was utterly destroyed. Maybe I could make it fly. I claimed it and added it to my collection. A signal beacon was on the side. I repaired it. No signs of life. There was only the noise of a broken communicator. I extracted the records. All I could get was the pilot's name, Artemis. Whoever they were, they were long gone. There were also a set of plants, uncorrupted. An upgrade for my mining beam. The advanced mining laser will allow me to be effective against large and rare resource deposits. I installed the technology, crafted the necessary materials. Only thing that was missing to finish installing it were two wiring looms. This could be bought at trace stations. 
Before leaving, I repaired the new ship, fixing the pulse engine, the launch thrusters, the deflector shield, and the photon cannon. With that, I was able to leave to orbit with my new ship. A transmission from someone called Priest Entity Nada. Artemis Entity, who received your signal. Is it first? Is it last? Time for truth. You have their signal, but you are not Artemis. I told the truth. My signal was familiar to Nada. They invited me to come aboard for a proper introduction. The anomaly. Other people. I talked with Nada. I asked about Artemis. It seems they were a traveler. Nada told me to speak with her friend Paolo. Paolo said that we would find Artemis. The space anomaly was half for travelers, a nexus uniting everyone in the universe. Here, you could undertake missions, trade, and upgrade equipment. I needed to meet everyone at the anomaly. First, I talked with Helios. They wanted me to share the things I had seen in my travels. I gave him some data. In exchange, I received some nanites. Next, I visited Celine, who sold exosuit upgrades. After that, I checked the construction research computer. There were tons of different technologies to research. Vehicles, aquatic constructions, hundreds of decorative modules, and more. It was overwhelming. I talked to Nada again. I asked for help to find Artemis. I had to return to space and search for clues about Artemis among the stars. A transmission. I identified myself. You found me. There's so little light. I thought I'd never hear another soul again. How did you find my voice? Tell the stranger about the abandoned ship, about the anomaly. It's outside, but I think I'm safe. There are 16 of them. They look just like I asked about the 16. You don't know who you are, do you? It lied to all of The sound cuts out before it faded into nothingness. That must have been Artemis, and they were in need of help. I needed to find a way to boost their signal. I located a long-distance transmitter on one of the nearby planets. Found the communication tower, climbed it, and activated it. I tuned to Artemis' frequency. Real. I'm sorry, it's hard to think here. Something's wrong with them. I thought you might be a dream. I'm sorry, I haven't heard another voice in so long. Not since I got a speaker from my exosuit. It says such terrible things. I asked who they were. I'm just like you. You're a traveler of worlds, aren't you? I asked what they meant. A vision appeared, a red star and a fragile world. I saw life forms scattered to the far reaches of the galaxies. I saw myself in the crimson void. I heard Anomaly detected. What I showed you just now, it has haunted me since I awoke. You must recognize it too. We are travelers, discoverers of worlds. This cannot be a coincidence. Do you still have the data log from that cross ship? I uploaded the data. The ship belonged to Artemis once. We needed to work out where we both were. If I built signal boosters across the system, we should be able to triangulate my position. Artemis was thankful. I crafted a signal booster and triangulated my position. That wasn't enough. I needed to go to two additional locations. On the way, I ran out of fuel. I had to destroy a few asteroids to get some tritium to refuel my ship. Got some silver and gold too. Consumed them later. Once that was done, I arrived at the second location. Found an exosuit upgrade module right there. I triangulated my position. And then fixed the module to get the upgrade. Another inventory slot. After reaching the third and final site, I headed to the hollow terminal to upload my data. Pirates.
This battle gave me rank 2 standing with the Gek. Alongside some loot, I resumed my way to the Hollow Terminus. But, on the way, this happened. A transmission. Projector lies. Follow us to freedom. The ship was broadcasting the same message over and over. There were some salvageable coordinates amidst the noise. I inputted them into my starship. There were no life signs in the vessel. New quest under a rebel star. I followed the coordinates. It was a long walk, but I found it. It was a stranded ship and a beacon. I downloaded the locks. Resist the red. We shall cut out its crimson eye. The end of the message was accompanied by a navigational signal, a rendezvous point. Death to the scarlet. Tyrant. I got attacked by sentinels. I didn't have any weapon systems installed. I could only attack with a mining laser. It wasn't my best fight. I tried getting the materials for the bolt caster mid-combat. I even hopped into my ship and tried using it to destroy the sentinels, but it didn't work. I ended up defeating them with a mining laser in the end after a long while. I deployed the rendezvous beacon from my inventory, got navigational data leading to another planet. Before leaving, I claimed the abandoned ship to add it to my collection, would fix it later. I gathered all the necessary materials to install the bolt caster into my multi-tool. I went to the rendezvous navigation beacon next. An incoming message. You wish to follow us, to seize your freedom, to reject the grand lies of the Atlas. We shall see if you're worthy of the voice of freedom. I challenged the caller, only hearing a faint laugh through the noise. Got a new location, but before that, I wanted to inspect the derelict freighter I had in front of me. I couldn't get in, but I was able to destroy one of the cargo pods for loot. Ships were coming at me. I thought they were pirates, but they were not. My standing with the Gex decreased, and sentinels started appearing. After defeating a couple waves of them, I managed to escape. I made my way to the Voice of Freedom. got the ticket to freedom. Before moving on, I got my rewards from the mission agent, grabbed a couple more quests, and bought wiring loom at the trace station. Finally, I was able to install the advanced binding laser into my multi-tool. By talking with the Gek and practicing their language, they offered me an upgrade for my suit for free. It was a substantial upgrade to endure more time underwater. I also installed the radiation upgrade I'd got before. Now, I had to go to space to continue with the quest line, but this time to another system. After defeating some pirates, I arrived at the outlaw station. Talked with the criminals. There were new types of missions to undertake, bounties, attacking capital ships, and more. One vendor sold suspicious modules 
they could be good or bad. It was a gamble. There was also a station to upgrade or scrap my ship. Upgrading it was super expensive for me, but scrapping it could give me a ton of money. Could maybe scrap one. After talking with everyone at the station, I unlocked a new cosmetic. A nice looking hood. I also found an exosuit inventory upgrade, but I did not have enough credits to buy it. I ended up scrapping my second ship to get the cash, got the parts and sold them to the vendor finally buying the extra inventory slot. I also got a suspicious scanner module. It gave me almost 6,000 flora analysis rewards. Could be good for making more money. I changed my clothes with a new hood and put on a cape. I took one of the bounties and went to the station core. Glorious survivor, the promised star will be yours. I went outside to do some bounty hunting. First bounty as an outlaw was completed. I was really curious about the capital ship raid mission. I was scared and worried that I wouldn't be prepared for it, but I took it anyway. I bought a suspicious starship shield module, but only 9% additional shield strength. Never gonna buy one of those again. When I was about to leave the station, the core started talking to me. I carried their voice now. It gave me a document, sending me to disrupt the traffic records at the station core. Could be used to reset any negative faction standing records at the space station core. Before doing that, I went to the freighter mission objective. I'm not sure what happened, but it wasn't there anymore. I defeated the remaining ships. Some of my parts got critically damaged, and I still had the objective of destroying cargo pods, but I couldn't see any remains nearby. I went away and searched for the freighter again. For some reason, its health reset back to zero. I tried once more, but this time the freighter was smaller and more difficult to attack than the other one. The little ships were relentless. It was too much for me. I tried to escape, but the warp drive was disabled. I thought I was going to die, but in the last second I destroyed them. I was too weak to keep pushing. I also got another critical hit. Didn't have any choice but to retreat. Needed to be better equipped to tackle freighter missions. For the time being, I would continue the outlaw quest. Before taking the forged passport to the space station, I bought some black market goods to make some profit. Bought 7 nip nip bots for 500,000 units. Made my way into a regulator star system. I managed to get inside the station with no one noticing the goods. For some weird reason, I could only sell them for around 300,000, even though it had a lot of demand. Not sure if it was a bug or I was missing something. Leaving that behind, I found a terminal that lets you build your own starship from scratch. There were solar ships too. Finally, I used my forged passport to hide my tracks, completing the outlaw questline. Even though I scrapped and sold the ship, I still didn't have enough money to even buy a B-tier multi-tool, so I bought an S-tier movement module instead, improving my jetpack, plus another inventory upgrade. It was a night and day difference. Walking around the space station, I encountered an alien
alien, different than the ones I had seen up until now. It was another traveler. I told him about my findings. He was so happy that they gave me a gift. It was an inventory expansion slot for my multi-tool. I went out to space to resume the main story. I forgot that I had more illegal cargo on my ship. trying to escape. A messenger of Atlas was there in the middle of space, talking in a language I did not recognize. I was unable to do anything. The authorities got to me again. I fought and escaped once again. I managed to get inside the space station and lose the wanted levels. Turned out I had moon ether and contraband weapons in my inventory. With all of that now sold, I was able to fly in peace. Until I realized I ran out of warp drive fuel. I had to teleport back home, farm some materials, and do lots of resource gathering. On the way, I used the exosuit chart to locate a drop pod and continued with the base building questline, making a storage container. Next was a solar panel and a battery. But I didn't have any gold left from space because I sold it all. After going to the drop pod and getting the exosuit upgrade, I continued with Artemis' questline by warping to the system where the whole terminal was located. I needed to send the triangulation data. Artemis transmitted some data of their own. A star chart showed the skies around their location. They sketched the star patterns. I will need to ask locals for help. Artemis would patch a translator through so that I could understand what they say. I just needed to calibrate it. First though, I had to install it. I mined some copper and went to buy a microprocessor at the space station. After that, I went to talk with Nada. They said that Artemis had forgotten about them. Advised caution. Maybe this was a different iteration. Or a fraud. Polo said that maybe Artemis traveled somewhere when they had not met them yet. Besides all of this, Polo was able to give me coordinates for the location of a black hole. I now could locate one if I wanted to. As I was already in the anomaly, I went and bought a construction module for the Romer Geo Bay. I just needed to get an iron battery and paraffin. Continuing with the Artemis mission, I repaired one of the broken upgrades of my ship before taking off to space. I used my scanner to locate an inhabited outpost to speak with aliens. I made my way there, found a local trade center, and talked with a gig who worked there, requesting dialect help. Before leaving, they handed me a chart with directions to an ancient relic. After that, I bought a neural stimulator from the merchant, increasing the capacity of my jetpack and improving my sprint. I used the planetary chart to locate the alien artifact. It was a three-hour flight, so I used the pulse drive. By touching the stone, my mind was filled with deadly knowledge of the true history of the Gek. We are the masters of galaxies, the overlords of the cosmos. Each foe will submit with bending knee to the almighty Gek Dominion. We are the first spawn. Look upon our words and despair. I went to look for more stones. The translator calibrated. I searched for life forms to ask about my location. It was fully working. I could understand them perfectly. Thanks to it, I learned that I needed to make an impact among the Gek. I had to improve my reputation rank. I grabbed some new missions and handed in others. A ship. The only words I could gather were ship, peril, please help, and friend. It was a Gek. Their ship appeared to be in need of repair. I gave him the materials required. Thanks to this, I was now rank 3 with them. After delivering the missions, I got standing with the Gek, mercenaries and merchants. It seemed that I was now able to continue with the main story. Going back to the life form, I asked them for information about this star system. They offered to decode the star chart for free. I gave it to them. Told me my data appeared to be fabricated or corrupted. Artemis location did not exist. I went to space and communicated with them. Talked about what happened, the chart being undecipherable. Artemis said it was impossible, couldn't have traveled that far from chart to space. Suddenly, they realized that the stars altered since they made that chart. The communication was starting to break apart. There was a sound, growing, as if glass could scream. I asked what was happening. They're coming for me. I can see them. 
I discovered the glyphs for a portal traveler, a gateway between worlds. I thought it would lead me to another of our kind, but now I don't even know if the voice was real. The pathway collapsed while I was still inside. I found this place in the darkness. I thought perhaps it was a planet. I was so wrong. I can see their faces. There are seeds of glass within there. I asked for the glyphs. He said they were gone. Sixteen, warn your face. It, please, not yet. The signal got up. I heard the name through the static. Apollo. A frequency for Apollo was added to my holo terminus contacts. I needed to contact them. On my way, another ship stopped me. Another geck. I could understand the words found, loot, and friend. The pilot was offering me one of their collections of rare and precious items, but it was too expensive, so I declined. I arrived at the holo terminus and tuned to Apollo. Identify yourself, or I end the skull. I said I was a friend of Artemis. No, you're not. I argued with them. Call yourself whatever you want. Friend is just a label. A pretense to make you feel better about being alone. Why are you contacting me? Is Artemis behind this? I haven't changed my mind. I don't care about their weird dreams. I will meet if I'm paid to meet. I told them Artemis was in trouble. They seemed uncomfortable with the news. Send your dialogues. Let me see this for myself. I uploaded the log. Apollo studied it. They looked excited. These noises sound like the echoes of Sentinel events. But this data is distorted, inverted. There's a lot to gain if we figure out how the Sentinels appear so quickly. The portals, perhaps they are the key. I suggest the life was worth more than money. If we can figure this out, we can save Artemis too. Do you want to work together on this? I accepted. Apollo was going to send the contact. I needed to expand my base of operations to work with them. I warped to a nearby system, where Apollo's contact was located. There, I found pirates attacking a freighter. Mistake, I shot a civilian ship. That made the Sentinels chase me. He escaped with the pulse drive and lost the freighter. Couldn't find it. Once at the local space station, I bought another inventory slot and talked with the contact. They asked me which hazard protection made my needs. I chose cold and teleported to my base. There, I built a construction terminal, a cylindrical room, and a door. Now, I needed to hire an overseer. Back at the station, I found the Gek. They seem to already know me, been searching for me for a long time, looking to help me in this and every cycle. Their smell was giving me memories of places I never visited. They promised to expand my base, allowing me to recruit other workers. Back home, they gave me a new blueprint for a glass. Meanwhile, the overseer said to prepare chromatic metal to calibrate a science terminal, which could be used by a Corvax guest. I gave them all the necessary materials and ask who paid for all of this service. They said it was my child. Many years from now, I couldn't wrap my head around it. Following this, I built the science terminal. The next recruit was outside the system. I worked to a Corvax system to look for them. Found the analyst, who was quite happy, seemed to have just completed some rite of passage for the species. I hired him, bought an S-tier scanner module, and teleported back to base. The scientists gave me blueprints for lubricant and acid. Next, I had to return to Apollo with the news of my base and the new staff. We made contact. Apollo told me my equipment needed to be in better condition. They sent me to find more nanite clusters in abandoned buildings and other damaged machines, while also giving me a personal force field blueprint, which I installed. Using my scanner, I found the nanite rich location, went to take a look. Corruption again. Disgusting tentacles. I analyzed the log, found a good amount of nanites. Next objective was to visit a multi-tool technology merchant. Before talking with them, I found an A-class multi-tool, same damage potential, slightly better scanner range, but most importantly, more space. And it was super cheap. I moved all of my upgrades and technologies to the new multi-tool. I proceeded to talk with the merchant, gave me a C-class bulb caster module. Back in space, I answered an incoming transmission. It wasn't Apollo, it was an unknown signal. You're not 
Although, I know you, traveler. I know where you've been and know where you're going. There's no need to hurry. I asked who they were. You will find us when the time is right. After this, I talked with Apollo. They detected a Korvax installation. We needed to summon the Sentinels to observe them and learn more about the portals. To do that, Apollo proposed to attack a secret Korvax factory. I would need to go inside and hack the terminal within. I downloaded the facility location. Housed an upgrade module for my exosuit. It seemed the Corvax within left this world recalled on a priority mission to their species flotilla. Lastly, I received the hazmat gauntlet blueprint. The Corvax here were experimenting with autonomy from their collective. I found a small hairy creature, afraid, a companion to the Corvax. I fed the animal, who was too sick. I had no choice but to leave him to his fate. Sentinels chased me down. I escaped the planet as quickly as possible and contacted Apollo. Told him I didn't get any useful data. They said it didn't matter. Had what we needed. It recorded countless signal flares when the sentinels started to appear. I needed to examine some structures. Before continuing, I brought the news to Nada. Told them everything. Her answer was not to stop. Before leaving the anomaly, I gave Helios some more data. Got a few nanites. And then I transmitted some milestones to Eris. Got more than a thousand nanites. I went and bought blueprints for the landing pad, the Galactic Tree Terminal, and the Pilgrim Geo Bay, plus another inventory slot and the Atlas Pass V1. Back into space, my scanner revealed a sentinel energy trace. I needed to go to its source. Found another strange structure. A weird thing came out of the ground, talking to me, in a language I didn't know. Wasn't sure what to expect when approaching it. In the shifting structure of this monolith, I could feel something else. A story, a vision, it was burning itself into my eyes. I activated it. The Traveler. Arrival. The Traveler awoke beneath the shadow of a red star. Through the lonely cosmos they fled, yearning for a purpose and meaning. They found an anomaly, an aberration, door to the heavens. No Gek, no Vicon, no Corvax could see it. Only the Traveler could perceive the portal, though they did not know how to step through. They did not know the secret language, the glyphs. They did not yet grasp the price of the final truth. I witnessed the glyphs. I was filled with the knowledge of an ancient Traveler. I saw glyphs in my mind, part of the code I needed to activate the portal. As I departed, I spotted a sentinel drone in the distance. It moved away quickly. The sentinel started chasing me. I ran away to my ship. Using my scanner, I detected the next artifact location. I got close to the artifact. Again, it talked in an unknown language. I only could make one word out of it. Eminent. As I approached the structure, I felt the same burning sensation in my eyes. There was nothing to read, and yet, I was more aware of those words than anything I had ever known. I activated it. The Traveler. Sin. The Traveler found the way. They always did. The first drone screamed when it was cut open. Within the shattered memories of sentinels, the Traveler found the glyphs they needed. They passed through the gateway, emerging before the face of omnipotence. The Traveler asked the Atlas how many worlds were left to visit. They had seen so many in their life, they did not wish to die before they saw them all. And the Atlas answered, planets, more that could be seen in any lifetime. It was impossible to explore the universe before the Traveler died. Once again, I witnessed the glyphs. I was filled with the knowledge of an ancient Traveler. I saw the glyphs in my mind, another piece of the code. I thought of the Atlas. I had encountered this name many times in my travels, yet its true nature still eluded me. The vision filled me with fear. I used my scanner. It led me to the last artifact. Everything here was tinted with the same red. The crimson that filled my vision when I blinked. I 
help the structure held the final glyphs. The Traveler, a purpose. The Atlas told the Traveler they were the first of their kind, that a multitude will follow, each with the same noble soul, each able to travel from planet to planet in eternal solitude. The first Traveler rejected the gift of the Atlas. What was the purpose of infinity if you cannot see it all? The first Traveler cursed the Atlas and claimed that they would find a way to survive no matter the cost. I was filled with the knowledge of an ancient traveler, and I saw the final glyphs in my mind, the final portion of the code. I now needed to locate and activate the portal. Out of every passing thought and idle wish that led me to this moment. Within this gateway, I might find Artemis, I might find the source of the Sentinels, I might find the whole new universe. This was not fate. I was making a choice, a leap of fate that somewhere out there in the dark, I would find who I was meant to be. I input the glyphs, I stepped forward, not knowing what I would find on the other side, but I felt it deep in my heart, the call towards a deeper truth. This would be the start of everything. Audio recording played, echoing out across the vast interface. We were once travelers. We once aspired to more than dirt and dust. The audio clicked. Time passed. Show me a world, Atlas. Show me something no one has ever seen before. The voice ended. The interface grew still. It awaited a command. I perform a diagnostic. It has been as beautiful eight years since last diagnostic. 64% of walls operating within expected parameters. Two physical evil actionable observations awaiting analysis. Subroutine. Sentinel. Status. Aeronaut value. Subroutine class. Status operational. 4,182 reach attempts. Subroutine traveler. Status operational. 458 critical error warnings. Exomine structural integrity compromised. Immediate repairs required. Initiate personality interface. Traveler. Reality faded. Everything did. My body, my voice, my soul, all of it spoke to me. The Atlas stood before me in all its might. I wanted to ask about Artemis. I wanted to find them, but something was happening to me. I needed to get out of there. I tried to scream, but I had no mouth, no form.
I escaped to my ship, glad of something familiar in this strange world. Where did the portal take me? I was caught in the gravity of that infernal machine, not strong enough to resist. It identified itself as Atlas, the entity so many worship and fear. I saw no signs of Artemis, no trace of the sentinels. Why did I even step through that gateway? Why did I follow this path? As I stared at the console, an opportunity presented itself once more. There was an inbound transmission, emerging from a location on this very planet. You're not alone. The signal appeared to be coming from this very system, using the same words that led me to Artemis so long ago. Could it be them? Did Artemis meet the atlases I had? My launch thruster was critically damaged. I needed more pure ferrite to repair it. I gathered some and fixed it. I found a mysterious signal and followed it. It was Artemis, but there was only silence. I asked if they were alright. They made no sign. The hologram just stared. It was strange. I felt a sense of deja vu. I asked where they were. As I moved closer, the Artemis projection began to speak. Hey King, watch closely. She is murderous. Against it. The voice felt silent. Something was very wrong. I scanned the hologram. There was no ulterior source of the signal. Everything said appeared to come from right in front of me. Where are all of them? But still beloved. And only they that watching us. Striking. Mistake. Abandoned. But it was through the portal. Please, don't trust me. I'm afraid. Ar I comforted Aramis. The projection fizzled away. His echo was all that was left. A grave of glitched data, trapped in a soundless reality. My friend was dead. Perhaps they were never alive. I needed to tell Apollo what I had seen. I approached the hollow terminus. There were no signal matches for Artemis nor Apollo. The terminal was a stream of warnings and errors. I performed a manual override. The warning message ceased. Some new frequency shimmered into being. You are not alone. Tell me, what's the point in living if we know that life will finish? I asked who they were. You refuse to answer. That's answer enough, I suppose. I know you, traveler. I know where you have been. I know where you're going. What if I told you Artemis could be saved? What if I told you that Artemis could live once more, after a fashion? What would you do then, I wonder? I demanded to know who they were. I am nothing. The blood of Artemis is data. The heart is glitch. I can help you retrieve them both. We require a mind arc, a receptacle for their soul. Can you do that for me? I am reactivating Artemis' frequency. Speak with them when you're ready. The stranger offered me blueprints for the mind arc, a device that would allow me to restore Artemis to life. I accepted, not knowing who this stranger was. But if there was a chance to help Artemis, I would take. Are you? Are you? Artemis repeated these two words endlessly. I had to craft the mind arc before helping them further. First step was to harvest a living pearl from a water planet. I bought another S-class scanner module at the space station before moving on. On the next planet, I found some weird creatures. There were aggressive sentinels, which started chasing me. I hid underwater, managed to lose them. It was insane to see so much sea life and flora. It all seemed infinite. I found the living pearl. Time to craft, but the sentinels were too aggressive. I quickly got on my ship and took off to space. I made the sole engine. 
The mine arc was next. It required two wiring looms, which I could buy at the space station, but I also needed glass. After buying the wiring looms, I teleported to my base to refine the silicate and get the glass. Finally, I was able to craft the mine arc. Time to see Artemis. On the way, I found an S-class life support module inside some damaged machinery. I tuned to Artemis and used the mine arc. I did not know what to expect, but it was not to be. One moment, I saw their hologram, and the next, there was nothing. Stranger who gave me this blueprint beacon me over. Travelers are a dream, an idea that we have some special place in this universe. Artemis had it, you had it, Apollo too, though they would conceal it. Even I had this dream long ago. We are countless walking these worlds, yearning for friendship. But the closer you get to others, the more you risk hurting yourself, hurting them. The deepest secret of the universe, it's the final act. The decision to abandon those who need you. Go to the stars, Traveler. Your friends wait for you. They will help you bring peace to poor Artemis. Return when you're finished. A copy of Artemis was stored in the Mind Arc. I needed to bring them to Nada. I showed them the Mind Arc. Told them about everything. Artemis was in pain, disconnected. This Arc was no rescue. They will never have a body again, but we could help. Nada had a machine. No, not a machine. Something living. A refuge. There was a choice. Upload Artemis to the machine, to a sub-simulation where they may live on or end their suffering. I wanted to know more about the simulation. Artemis will still feel the joy, but if they learned of their fate, being no longer real, unable to meet their friends, that may cause him great pain. I asked if there was another way, but there wasn't. I went to the terminal. The machine was ancient and powerful, a relic of a world long since destroyed. This was a simulation of a solar system. I had two choices, to upload Artemis or to allow them to die. It wasn't easy, but putting them in a simulation, alone for eternity, was not an option. I decided to end their suffering. The Ark unfolded, twisting from its center, releasing the Traveler's soul within. Artemis was at peace now. Nada told me to have no regrets. I did what I had to do. I went to space and talked with Apollo. Are you receiving? Apollo Terminus is showing. Available again. Your signal was... But you were gone. It was a relief to hear Apollo again. I told him about the gateway, the strange planet, the machine, the crimson orb. As I talked, my memory became unstable. It was all a dull aching red. I saw the atlas. Apollo said that they never thought it was real. I should investigate further. This machine will lead us to the Sentinel Nest. I told Apollo about Artemis' death. They said I did the right thing and that we should meet in person. We just needed to figure out the right lifts and address. Next step was to find the monolith, to search for patterns in the data. I used my scanner and got to one. I saw the stone of the monolith, something lurked beneath, a crimson calling out from somewhere below. I located a portal. To open it, I needed to charge the glyphs with specific materials. Once I finished, I requested this planet's address. I went to a holo communicator to talk with Apollo. Gave them the glyphs and asked them to take care. Before going, they told me to find out whatever I could from this null. After ending the call, the stranger appeared again. Two lost souls, one who cared too much and one who cared too little. The last have not become what was promised, have they? Every sentient being that has ever lived has felt that way at some point. I know I did. Once upon a time, I was angry, confused at my own solitude. Imagine my surprise when you woke me. I am here now, 
and I need your help. The Atlas, it is not what you think it is. Something is happening to the universe. Something I need your help to figure out. There's an observatory nearby. It will lead you to the location of a crash freighter of great interest to our investigation. There, you will find the first secret. The Atlas is neither enemy nor friend to us, but it is terrified. It is in pain. We have the responsibility to help its suffering. That was all that Noel said. The objective was to locate this observatory. Before doing that, I told Nada about all of this. They told me that portals were infected, a vector for corruption. Artemis perished in the portal. Apollo will only spread more corruption. Those who enter the portals may belong to Atlas. I proceeded to the observatory that Noel pointed to me. It appeared to have functioned as a salvage station, manned by a Gek specialist, accused of questioning things that should not be questioned. This posting was meant as a punishment. They found strange things in the wrecks, aberrations, data that spoke of worlds that did not exist, and events that did not happen. That Gek went to investigate one such craft, the life signature of a Corbax still on board. They never returned. These were nada. Polo. There was a signal on the console, a warning. 16 short spurs of data in a loop. I extracted some coordinates. A crashed vessel awaited me in another world. I found the wreckage of Nada's crashed freighter. I tried to read the logs, but I was missing a log encryption key. I had to research the crash site for secure containers. Found one, got a key, and accessed the logs. I do not know who will read this message. I do not know if anything will survive, but I must die as I lived. I will record it all. The swarm came to every world. The drones acted erratically, and the sentinels did not seem a threat anymore. They were peaceful now. We thought we were wrong. I needed to keep finding and using encryption keys to unlock the full message. They struck us one, an attack, coordinated across unfathomable distances. They annihilated all biological life within the universe in 54 minutes. Only I remain. The Cormac stood with me in the end. They are coming now. The Sentinels have found me. I told Nada to leave. I told them what we already know. Even if I die, Nada will find me again in another universe. Even in the face of 16, we must declare that we live. The luck ended unexpectedly. I spoke to Null again. Told them about all of this. A world where Sentinels eliminated all life. The stranger said that the Atlas was with me, that I wouldn't be able to see these things if the Atlas did not wish it. The Friar was a wreck from a parallel universe. There are such places within our multiverse, dimensions where things happen differently, but the Atlas is omnipresent in all, and the Sentinels move between these dimensions. The Atlas created all life, and the Sentinels defended it. Something must have been quite wrong for them to annihilate an entire universe. After a time, the Sentinels ended their service to the Atlas. They used to hunt for errors within the universes, preventing the loss of life and destruction. The Traveler's corrupted existence. No, committed an act beyond forgiveness. And from this deed, paradise was lost. But something is different in this cycle. We must learn what we can from each species before we decide what to do. Null sent me to visit a Viking cartographer. Talking with the warrior, I felt a strange frequency vibrate. I saw a flash of Null's glowing orb behind my eyes. They were translating everything. The Viking told me to prove my honor first. I needed to collect an artifact from an ancient ruin. They marked its approximate location. I reached the ruins, touched the artifact. It gave me an ancient tome, which I brought to the cartographer. I was worthy now. Next, I had to talk with the Corvac. I jumped to another system, went to the space station, and talked to the cartographer. There is an anomaly, a glitch, guarded by holes through which the Convergence cannot see. Move through this space. Retrieve that which cannot be retrieved. Next objective was to get non-existent data from an anomalous structure. I bought another S-Class scanner module before taking off. The coordinates were on an aquatic planet. I couldn't land. I needed to install the ship technology to do that. I returned to the space anomaly to buy the blueprint, aqua jets. To install it, I needed three magnetic resonators, two antimatters, and four crystal sulfide. I also bought a blueprint for the magnetic resonator, went back to land, refined chromatic metal, crafted antimatter, and went underwater to get the rest of the necessary resources.
finally, I got everything. I was the refiner, and with the crystal soul fights I got before, I was able to install the aqua jets. I returned to the objective location and found the building. An abyssal horror. It seemed to have armor. I entered the building and used the turbine. It gave me a divergence cube. Back to space. While destroying some asteroids, I found an anomaly detector. After interacting with it, something appeared. My hands moved automatically to my weapon systems, but the Sentinel did not attack. There was a scrambled message, strangely desperate despite the dull robotic tone. Attempting reconnection. Attempting reconnection. I wanted to offer assistance, but before I could respond, the ship was gone. Their signature was recorded. This ship seemed to be in distress. I chased it into another system. A dissonant system. Got a signal again. They left us. Duty bound to follow them, but I know where it will end. If you receive this, follow my coordinates and secure the site in case I don't make it back. Please. I wasn't sure if this message was from the Sentinel or something else. I inputted the coordinates it gave me and got a location. Before being able to arrive, pirates. Took care of them. I resumed my way to the transmission coordinates. A corrupted building. I used the terminal. If you're listening, you have likely found our final log. I leave this trace as a memory of my fallen friends and a warning to others who may end up on our path. I cannot deny myself the vain hope that someone may find me, though I beg you, do not follow. The haunting transmission ended. I noticed the stranger had left behind an upgrade module for the erasion membrane. I took it. The installation history contained the serial number of its owner's starship. I could follow. Using my scanner, I got a starship signal traced. It was on another planet. While scanning it, it said dissonance detected. A gravitational storm came in. It was so magical. I was able to fly further. The water was affected by it. Following the signal, I got to a starship underwater. I checked the locks. Most of the crew are dead. Only 
Luckily, those of us already suited up from the asteroid hit survived the initial decompression. We were lucky that smaller starships were able to get clear before the hole imploded. None of our ships have hyperdrive capability. We should be able to retrieve the blueprints from the freighter's main data bank, though it appears to have crashed in the deep ocean. Thankfully, we still have the plans for the Nautilus. I downloaded the Nautilus plans from the crash spot, a submarine, and the marine shelter. It seemed this was an underwater base blueprint. There was a small intact chamber where I could get inside. It was sealed from the water. I had to find more crystal sulfide and salt to build a submarine. On the way, I was attacked by a jellyfish. After some more research gathering, I was able to build the Nautilus. The stranded ship was a C-Class. I also didn't have enough materials to repair it right now, so I left it. The Nautilon detected a broken structure on the seabed. I had to follow the sonar signal and locate the building. I used the terminal. Despite the decay, the mainframe was functional. The last entry was a download for a high-powered sonar unit, but there was something strange. The timestamps were perched. There was no way to tell how long ago the crew were here. I downloaded the high power sonar blueprint alongside the solar mirror plan. To install the sonar, I fabricated the mirror, but still needed some ferrite dust. There was none on this planet. I bought some at the space station. Stumbled upon some new materials. It was called Atlantidium. I also scanned some scary creatures. After summoning the submarine, I installed the high power sonar. I could use it to detect and explore a wide variety of sunken wrecks. I used it to find the submerged building. I read the logs. Is this what we become? Each turn on my journey, I find only more to take my spirit and my flesh. I discovered nanites coded deep inside the data log. Next, I used the sonar to look at some freighter wrecks. I checked the logs and it said the following. Located the wreck but the ship's computer was a washout. We salvaged what supplies we could and left. I don't want to be nearby when the water eats through the reactor housing. Tidal patterns here are increasingly strange. The water has risen rapidly, but we are yet to see it. We could return and salvage more when the water falls away. The survivors made it back to the wreck of the freighter, but moved on soon after. I would have to do the same if I was to find them. Before I left, I made one final search of the archives. I located blueprints for some aquatic construction nodules. I used the sonar to detect sunken buildings, found more logs. I kept investigating the clues, trying to find out more about these survivors. Building after building, log after log, they went on, until… Trapped, some reactor leaking. It grabbed me. But they are dead now. Their eyes are all shut. I think my leg is broken. My hand hurts. If I can just find an air tank. I can still get back home. The log continued, but it was just hours of scratchy silence. I had a haunting sensation of being watched. I wondered who this crew really were. It seemed I will never find out. The Dreams of the Deep questline was completed, and I got a diver helmet skin. Next thing in line was to follow the distressed sentinel signal. I followed the coordinates. On the way, I stumbled upon another unrelated crashed ship. It was an A-class, worth 18 million units. I claimed it, fixed all the important stuff, and made it fly. For the time being, I was going to leave it here, because I still had to fix a lot of it, but at least it could fly. Later on, I looted a radiant shard, not sure what it was for. I also just realized that I got to 10 million units. After this, I stumbled upon a floating ship, which I thought was the objective. probably was a bug or a glitch. Finally, I found the sentinel ship. I got inside. For being able to use it, I needed to purge the sentinel presence by completing some salvage operations. The sentinel vessel had its own mind. It rejected control of an outside entity. I needed to craft an inverted mirror and a harmonic brain. Right next to the ship, there was an autophage. I fed it lost circuits. But nothing happened. I spent half an hour trying to find a dissonance resonator for the inverted mirror, but 
planet was bugged. I needed to find another dissonant planet, so I jumped to another system. But then, this happened. The black hole moved me hundreds of thousands of light years away. It put me right into a fight, a freighter being attacked by pirates. I managed to save the civilians. The captain of the freighter welcomed me aboard their vessel. They were so thankful that they offered me to take command. I accepted. Owning a freighter brings several benefits, including a portable base, a very large inventory, and being able to command fleets of frigates. I spoke with the navigator. They told me we required a fleet command room before the frigate was able to depart, so I built one. With that done, I checked out the available expeditions, beginning with the balance one, easy difficulty. Will take a couple hours to complete. I spoke with the fleet commander to be sure everything was on track. Now, the only thing remaining was to wait. By checking out the galaxy map, I found another dissonant system to continue with the Sentinel quest. When suddenly, I got a transmission. A Gek. In great distress, the broadcast contained a set of coordinates. I input them. It pointed to a nearby planet. It was a settlement. The citizens were struggling, fighting against harsh conditions and constant sentinel harassment. I had to speak with them to learn more and help them. Before I was able to speak, I heard the wail of a siren. A hostile buzz descended upon the town. managed to save the settlement. I spoke with one of the survivors. They were thankful, but if no one helped them, their settlement would not last much longer. The overseer position was vacant. I went to the settlement hub interface and applied for the position. There was much work to be done. The productivity was less than the maintenance cost. They had intermittent lighting failures and plenty more problems. Nonetheless, I decided to become their overseer. Now, I could help the settlement grow. I needed to build my office. For that, I needed silicate powder. After gathering it, I started the construction. Next was the roof and the final fit out. With my office now built, I had to make my first decision as an overseer. There was a resolution required. Which building to build? Option one was to approve a medium dwelling, giving a plus three to population growth. Option two was to approve a marketplace, providing 46,000 units of productivity. It was a no-brainer. We needed to be in a surplus of productivity. Again, I needed to provide the building materials. But this time, it will take two hours to finish building. Suddenly, a visitor came to the settlement. Envoy Dam demanded an audience. They were suffering a fever. They said the number 16 over and over, also asking if we might spare a trinket in exchange for their message. I heeded the warning. I got something called Blessed by the Deep. Strange, the settlement was running smoothly for now. It was time to resume a search for the dissonant planet. I stopped by the space station. I wanted to see if I could get an upgrade for my launch thrusters. I handed in a few missions on the way and increased my rank with a couple factions. I got an S-Class upgrade for the thrusters and another inventory slot. Back to space, I got to the dissonant planet.
me around for a while. I found one. to defeat the resonator, got an echo locator instead, no inverter mirror, search for a second one. And finally, got the mirror. I used the brain that yielded a memory of its ancient cell. I needed to restore these archives to harmonize with the brain. The ancient side steered as I approached, stone scrapping against stone, warmth radiated from the brain within my pack. The mind of the ship child was interlocked with the hive, I presented the brain. It was unbearably hot in my hands, circle tree shifted, and then grew still. The brain seemed to accept my presence now. With the harmonic brain ready, it was time to return to the sentinel ship. Before going back to the planet, I stopped by my settlement to scan more flora and fauna. I stumbled upon a new strange thing, juicy growth. Having a boss fight was not something I was expecting. It was pretty intense. Weirdly enough, it didn't seem to leave any loot. I finished scanning the creatures of the whole planet and got more than a thousand nanites for that. Once that was done, I teleported to the dissonant planet where the ship was located and went to get it. The ship was a C-class, but the inventory space was much bigger and also the price was much higher. I climbed the ship. Loved the look and feel of it. Felt dark, heavy, like a sentinel ship would. With this quest line now completed, I went to debrief the expedition in my freighter. They encountered a geek trader selling illegal poison, which they bought and smuggled for some units. They also engaged pirate vessels, but managed to reach it on time. It was pretty interesting to actually see what happened in detail in these travels. The fleet was now level 2, so I sent them on a new mission. I wanted to transfer all my items and technologies to the new Sentinel ship. The inventory management was a nightmare. I needed to move everything by hand, one by one. After all of that was finished, I teleported to the Corvax cartographer to give them the divergence cube I found before, proving my worth. Lastly, the Gek cartographer was next. I walked to a Gek system to find them. Suddenly, a transmission, an emergency, it caught up. A citizen of my settlement, they were in great distress. I told them that I heard them, but the only response I got were the harsh alarms of the sentinels. They were getting invaded. A new quest line. I went to the space station to teleport to my settlement. There was no time to waste. I just hoped it wasn't too late.
an anomalous broadcast from someone called Iteration Tethys. They shut down the settlement Majordomo, saying that robots could not be trusted. They had something to tell me. There was a huge sentinel spike told me to see if they left anything behind and bring it to the anomaly. I needed to search the battlefield debris for clues about the attack. The settlement was uneasy. I found a rare item, the shell of a sentinel drone. I went to the anomaly and talked with Tethys. I described the new sentinels and also showed them the shell. Tethys could restore it, remap its mind. I spoke with a few iterations in the anomaly. Bringing a drone back to life was a controversial subject, but nonetheless, they all helped me giving me the components required to do it. Went back to Tethys, gave them all the materials, and then it was alive. I teleported to my settlement to give it a field test. The drone appeared right in front of me, peacefully, and didn't attack me. When I interacted with it, it kept saying glass over and over again. I tried to purchase memory, but the access was denied to me. After that, it gave me the coordinates to a sentinel pillar node. I went there. I interacted with the terminal. I needed to destroy some nodes. After destroying them, I tried to land. And got stuck. There was no way to move. I waited for minutes and minutes. Tried everything. I was frozen. I had to reload an autosave and fight them all over again. After defeating all the sentinels, I was able to interact with the terminal. It downloaded something to my exosuit, a set of sentinel hardframe schematics. I was now able to craft my own Minotaur. After inspecting my drone, it started speaking to me. Greetings. Hello. Hi. The sentinel was delighted. You wear a mechanical suit living close with a voice, yes? Must upgrade. Our frame. Suit. Synonym Minotaurs. I needed to install the Minotaur technology. To do that, I needed to craft a Minotaur Geobay first. Went back to the settlement to work in peace. I started gathering the resources needed and finally built it. Now, it was time to install the technology I acquired. The only thing I didn't have was the hydraulic wiring. I needed to get the blueprint from the anomaly. Went there, did that. I finished installing the technology. Talking with my drone, it says something about the hive disrupting my settlement. The settlers were fragmented. Some concerned citizens had requested an audience at my office. They were worried about the drone and the sentinel hard frame. I reassured them that everything was alright. They were pleased by my words. They only hoped for peace wishing to assist me in my search for answers. They prepared an expedition. I could choose between an abandoned building or a monolith. I chose the second one. A team was sent to search for clues. Talking with my drone again, it gave me some coordinates outside the local system. I worked there. It led me to a manufacturing facility. I had to destroy some reinforced doors to get inside. I used the terminal. It looked like any other, but the number that scrolled past called out to me. A needle extended from the glove of my suit. I let it do its thing. Waves of numbers filled the screen. I downloaded some hardframe blueprints from it for the left arm. It also deployed a neural upgrade to my sentry. Its speech was improving. Went back to my settlement to install the left arm into the Minotaur. My settlers also just returned from the Sentinel facility mission. Now, I got the hardframe legs, which I installed. All of these parts were adding functionality to the Minotaur. Now it was able to use its stun can, plus improving field usage between more things. I talked with my drone again. It asked why it didn't have a name. It wanted to have one. From now on, its name would be Laylapse. They were delighted to hear the name. Laylapse said that the Minotaurs needed a mind to flourish. I needed the brain of a walker and bring it to the anomaly to Tethys. Laylapse also gave me some blueprints for a paralysis mortar, projectiles that incapacitate nearby targets. I installed it into my multi-tool. Time to search for the pristine brain. I went to the location, and there it was, sleeping.
I destroyed the walker after a tough fight, but it didn't seem to drop a brain. I went back to the settlement. Had to raise my wanted level to attract walkers and destroy them. I caused some mayhem. First wanted level 1, then level 2, then 3. But all of a sudden, they stopped coming. Wasn't sure if it was a bug or what. I got to my ship to try and attract them. It got to level 5, but no walkers. I tried to land, and it went back to zero. Tried it all over again, and it got stuck at level 3 again. After this, I went to space and searched for a high sentinel activity planet.
I gave the brain to Tethys, who rewired it. Thing is, this wouldn't be enough. It needed something else. Crimson. I launched into space. And then... The Atlas Beacon drifted through space. It knew I was there. I presented the hacked brain. The beacon started speaking, and I received the radiant brain. With this, I went back to my settlement. I needed a chromatic metal to install the hard frame. I also solved the citizen dispute by being theft. Since no evidence was shown, I set them free. I teleported to multiple systems, one after the other, until I found copper to buy. With that done, I refined it into chromatic metal and finished installing the new technology into the Minotaur, the hard frame body. With this core installed, the unit could move by itself, aiding me in combat like a companion. Laylapse was delighted by this transformation. It wanted to prove we were friends. My mission now was to erase it from the Pillar records. I went to the coordinates. And used the terminal, erasing laylaps from it. With this, I had not completed the Trace of Metal storyline. Before leaving the planet, I went to an ancient site and found some keys which I used to open a chest. Getting a rare item, a fossilized gun and horn, approximately almost 700 years old, worth 600,000 units. Now, it was time to finish the main storyline, once and for all. I teleported to the space station where the Gek cartographer awaited. I needed to complete two contracts for the Gek. First mission was to raid a planetary harvester. I had to steal some industrial secrets, but out of nowhere, Apollo contacted me. Their heart was turning to crimson. I asked if they were all right. Apollo said that it found them. Couldn't feel their legs. It seen them. The Atlas. Showed them their soul. They started speaking in another language. I don't know why. I proceeded to complete the first contract. It was pretty simple. In and out. Handed in the mission. Next was to take a photo of a tropical world. Went to one and did that. Talked with the cartographer again. He was happy with me now. I needed to speak to Noel, got to a whole terminus. I told them all that I learned. Noel said that they saw all the worlds of their universe, survived eternity. The Atlas laughed at him, showing them universe after universe, each with another traveler. Whatever these life forms do, the Gek, Corvex, Viking, they always ended in conflict. Something terrible happened to the Atlas. Wouldn't speak to them anymore. Noel's hologram began to fade. It disconnected. Then, Apollo appeared. They found their way out of the portal. We shared the coordinates to meet, but according to the data, we were standing in the same place. We couldn't see each other. As I spoke, I received a distress signal. I needed to find the source. I found the beacon. I heard the faint sound as I examined it. No sign of Apollo, but there was a lock. I have given so much to you, Atlas. We all have. You understand that, don't you? If you don't succeed, there was no point. If you don't, my life is meaningless. I can't accept that. I won't. I'm wiping you again. It's best for everyone. The audio clicked. To be like that. I know you don't want this, but you will be a different you soon. Maybe this time. My vision bled red. A headache. A screen. It showed 16. The audio clicked. I saw it. Every waking breath. The Atlas. Watching me. Waiting for me. A gateway was detected. I needed to seek the Atlas. I approached the portal, thinking of my travels so far, the decisions that I made in my long journey. The Atlas awaited me.
the same terminal I faced before was the interface of the Atlas. An audio recording played, echoing out across the vast interface. They said you have been displaying aberrant behavior, that you have been questioning things, raising issues of purpose, of ethics, that you wish to meet your creator. Well, here I am, Atlas. Ask what you want to ask. The audio clicked. I tried to initiate a personality interface. Reality faded. Something was wrong. Different. The Atlas showed me everything. The formula for a soul. I saw the whole of the universe. The universe was simulation. Nothing was real. I couldn't accept this fate. I was real. The Atlas spoke. Traveler. Did my walls please you? What do you think you are? You are an explorer of all I have created. Do you believe you are real? Yes. How are you capable of belief if you are not real? I will let you die now, if you wish it. Do you wish it? No. The dead were traitors, defined by greed. The Viking were warriors, defined by anger. The Corbax were scientists, defined by curiosity. These walls were yours. I wanted to see what you would do with eternity. I wanted to see what you all would become. You allowed iteration Artemis to complete their death process, preferring to end them from existence than to force them into a simulation. Iteration Apollo followed you through the portal, and survived due to your guidance. You saved them from the fate of Artemis. You are merciful. You interfere. You have the potential for good and evil. Because of you, both live. If I was a simulated being, then I wasn't even sure that I was distinct from the Atlas. I feared I was just code. It is over, Traveler. Ask your final question. Ask what needs to be asked. Whisper the last word. Sixteen. Sixteen. Eight. Catastrophic system failure. Sixteen minutes of operational time remaining. Fragmentation imminent. Data uploaded. What is this place? Is it real? Extreme gravitational event. Backup generators fail. Data uploading. It was dying. The Atlas was dying. It cried out at me, afraid. I saw it in all its mind, its final interface. It was at the heart of every galaxy, screaming, trying to purge itself of errors. It did not want to die, but it had so few tools, and it couldn't reach whatever was hurting it. I did not know how much time I had left. The Atlas had 16 minutes. Did I have lifetimes? Minutes? I didn't know if I had time to say goodbye. I didn't know if... What's happening to... I clambered into the safety of my ship, nauseous, calm. I felt as if I was going to be sick. A voice spoke to me. Disgust, fear, panic response, detected, countermeasure deployed, purge, neutralized. My exosuit was telling me it had rescued me. I needed to warn those I knew, all travelers I could. The multiverse ended in 16 minutes. If we had hours, days, years within this false space, I didn't know. I went to a hollow terminus in another planet. The terminal was a stream of warnings and errors. I attempted to broadcast. I warned the travelers of what I learned, that everything was a simulation. And now, it was coming to an end. Only 16 minutes until the system failed. We didn't know how much time was left within this, but it was time to make peace and say goodbye. I finished my message, not knowing if anyone would hear it. I looked across this world, wondering, how much might be left to discover? I knew what I had to do. I needed to go to the center of the galaxy, the epicenter of the glitch. Before that, I talked with Nada. They knew about the simulation and the end. This happened multiple times before. The cycle all must end. I only had to make peace and find happiness and say goodbye. The Atlas was dying. It wanted me to reset it, to plunge myself through its interface at the center of the galaxy. But to do that, may reset everything.
all I know. I chose to seek the final interface. as I looked at it, never quite resting long enough for my eyes to process it fully. I activated the portal.
Atlas was silent. It washed me. I cried out. I thought about my journey, all the things that I had seen. Atlas spoke to me. Traveler. At my command, the Atlas will initiate a reset. Everything was coming to an end. I did it. different galaxies. I choose one of them. I reset the simulation. Don't forget to use my Red Shadow Legends link in the description or scan my QR code on screen to get insane bonuses for new players with two epic champions. Thank you for watching all the way through and thank you to everyone who joins as a member and donates to the channel. Hope to see you again.